faintly. Very vaguely. Could you explain what it was, if, if any? He was a, uh, a neighbor of, uh, of mine when I bought a house in New Jersey. And uh, the man from whom I bought the house, whose name I wish I could remember, but I can't, uh, was a friend of Moretti's. Or as I met him, Willie Moore. What I, that's the man I met. And he came over and visited my wife and daughter and myself and brought Willie Moore with him just to introduce me to him. Did you know Mr. Moore's background when he was introduced to you, no, Mr. Moretti? No, as Mr. no Moore? I didn't know. I'd never seen him before. And Mr. Uh, we'll call him Mr. Moretti. Did he ever represent you as an agent in trying to uh, book uh, engagements or, or contracts for you at, at any time in, during Never. that period of time? Never. Was your career at that particular stage of your life ever a topic of discussion with Mr. Moretti, how he might be of some assistance to you? Never. Did he ever introduce you to any nightclub owner? The allegation has been made, and I'm sure you're not unfamiliar with it, that early in your career, that one of the reasons you progressed was due to the efforts of some members of organized crime. How would you respond to that allegation? Simply, it's ridiculous. Did you at any time in those uh, early years play nightclubs that, to your knowledge, were either owned or controlled? Bye. Members or associates of what's called organized crime? I could never prove that to you. Never. So of your own knowledge, of there your own always... knowledge, you didn't know that. Right, correct. But what I'm trying to say, sir, is that there was always gossip as to who owned it or who ran it, but. Uh, uh, one would perjure oneself by saying, well, I'm sure that so-and-so owned the club. But there were sometimes reason to suspect that that might have been the case. And maybe so, and they, and they were, uh, many of them were these so-called nefarious people were very, very good customers. They came to those places, mm -hmm. which is very knowledgeable. At that particular time uh, in your life, did you, did you knowingly, and I... In other words, to know for a certainty that some of the people you might be associating with or might be brought back to meet you or that you might see in the, uh, in the cafes or where you were working uh, were members uh, or associate associates of those people. Well, again, uh, again, it was a matter of uh, uh, conjecture on somebody's part what I read in newspapers and then saw faces and then began to meet these people. But I never had anything to do with them, business-wise, uh, rarely, rarely socially. Uh, no, no connection, really, whatsoever. Mr. Sinatra, there has, in the past several years, better known to you than to us, for sure, perhaps some degree of folklore have been generated in regards to you, and uh, there are a few of those instances that we would like to talk about. One that has to do with a, an entertainment contract that you had with, a, with Mr. Tommy Dorsey and at some point in time wanted to get out of the contract. The allegation is that maybe Mr. Moretti assisted you in getting out of the contract. Could you uh, explain to us what happened or what transpired during the Mr. Moretti or Mr. Time. Moore had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with my career at any time in my lifetime. Okay. Mr. Woodworth, uh, Agent Woodworth, could you indicate what your uh, findings were when you investigated that allegation? Yes, regarding the contract, uh, I spoke with both attorneys who negotiated the settlement of the contract. They assured me that a uh, settlement had been made which was agreeable to all parties more to the benefit of MCA and Tommy Dorsey than to Mr. Sinatra's. Thank you. Mr. Sinatra, uh, do you know a Mr. Joseph Vachetti? Well, I know him. He's gone. I said. In what capacity and what was your relationship with Mr. Vachetti? Uh, Joe Vachetti and I were just friends. I was fond of him and he was fond of me. Have you 
you ever had any business dealings or any type of business associations with him? None. Did you know anything of his background during the period of your friendship? Uh, I knew uh, more, I read and heard more about the backgrounds of his brothers than I did about him. Was there any, ever any inference uh, to you by anyone that perhaps he was quite closely tied in with his brothers? No, but I wouldn't have believed it anyway. In what uh, frame of reference did you know him? Just as a, as a social acquaintance? Just a social acquaintance who was a dear friend, and I liked him, and it was mutual, and uh, uh, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever associate or have any dealings with his brothers at all? No, I just must stay there. I know. The attendees of the conference were a who's who of top syndicate notables, and they came because Lucky had called. Italian gangsters such as Thomas Lucchese, Joseph Profacci, Vito Genovese, Joseph Bonanno, Willie Moretti, Joey Adonis, Augie Paisano, Joseph Maliocco, Mike Miranda, Steve Magandino, Santo Traficante, Carlos Marcello, Tony Accardo, and the Fischetti brothers from Chicago, Charlie Rocco and Joseph sat at the table. Lucky's call also went out to the major Jewish gangsters of the time who dropped everything to attend. Men like Dandy Phil Castell, Doc Stature, Abner Longy Zwillman, and Mo Dalitz. It was also reported that Frank Sinatra flew in with the Fischettis and that he was carrying $2 million in a suitcase to give to Lucky. Later reports stated that Sinatra didn't carry such an elaborate gift and that he wasn't there as part of the meeting, but simply for cover. But Carl Syphakis notes, not that Sinatra arrived empty-handed. He was also said to have brought Luciano a gold cigarette case. Later, during one of Luciano's absence from his Naples home, Italian police searched the place and found a gold cigarette case with the inscription, to my dear pal Lucky from his friend. Do you have an occasion to travel with uh, Mr. Fischetti at one time uh, to Havana? I happen to be on the same plane with him. I didn't travel with him. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of your trip to Havana? Find sunshine. And how long were you there? About uh, two days. Fischetti, uh, subsequent to your getting to Havana, introduce you to Mr. Charles Luciano? No. I was introduced to Mr. Luciano by a newspaper man named Nate Gross from Chicago. Was that in Havana? Or was in it... Havana. Yes, in Havana. And obviously, I knew who Mr. Uh, Luciano was because I... of Mr. Luciano. The allegation again is made that uh, on that trip, you conveyed by briefcase a sum approx of approximately $2 million. How do you respond to that allegation? If you can find me a attache case that holds $2 million, I will give you the $2 million. We found that to be a very significant problem as we checked with the men on how much it would weigh and how big it would be. But I, I was just. I think, it, I think it should be. Uh, it should be noted for the record that uh, I did not. You did not take. I did not. Did you ever entertain in any of the casinos in uh, Havana? I did not.
Did you, subsequent to your meeting of Mr. Luciano in Havana, ever have occasion to meet with Mr. Luciano again? Never. Uh, during trips to Rome and to Naples, uh, never. you never came in contact with him? Never. Did at any time uh, in your life you live at 10051 Valley Springs Lane in North Hollywood, California? I did. Could you offer uh, any explanation as to why your name and that address might have been in Mr. Luciano's possession when I searched by Italian authorities? I haven't the slightest idea. But your testimony is that, save and accept the time in Havana, you had had no contact at all with... I just met him at a bar and shook hands, as, uh, as uh, in many cases, and that was it.